Can you imagine that no man has been to the moon for more than 50 years? It begs the question, why is it so difficult to return to the moon if we have already done it once? After eight successful Apollo missions to the moon, NASA had the necessary experience to continue these flights. But there was never any thought in the USA of returning to the moon, and we know why. The last manned Apollo mission launched on December 7, 1972, and returned 12 days later. Apollo 17 explored the Taurus Littrow Valley on the moon with a lunar rover, and like all other Apollo missions, carried out some scientific tests. That was 51 years ago, and all this time it was almost as if the moon had become a stepchild of space travel. Located right on our doorstep, it is and remains the celestial object that is easiest to reach, and we humans should really be gaining experience in manned space travel. After all, our species would like to set off into space at some point, explore our own solar system, and possibly one day even travel to even more distant worlds. There are good reasons for NASA's refusal to return to the moon, which you should know. Moon flights were too expensive. It's hard to imagine today, but in the 1980s, there were fierce protests against the U.S. space programs. Since Apollo 16, the African-American population in particular had been protesting ever more strongly against the immense sums of money that the state was spending on trips to the moon instead of providing its poorest citizens with sufficient food and social security. President Nixon, recognizing the importance of support from diverse populations, responded to these growing concerns and decided to end the Apollo program in order to invest the funds in more pressing projects. The financial burden of the Apollo program was indeed enormous. An estimated $25.4 billion were spent over the entire duration of the Apollo program, and this sum would be far higher today if adjusted for inflation. This expenditure fueled the anger of some citizens, and the moon had somehow also become boring. While in 1969, almost all Americans were still gathered in front of the television when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon, by 1980, only a small proportion were still watching. Nixon's decision to finally end the Apollo program marked a turning point in the entire American space policy. More emphasis was placed on probes. The Pioneer probes had already been launched in the 1970s, and the two Voyager probes provided exciting highlights and unique images from space almost every year from 1979 onwards. So there was no longer any need to fly to the moon, not for research purposes and not for reasons of prestige. Is the moon still too expensive? In the meantime, space travel has long since experienced a renaissance. We have explored almost the entire solar system with probes, built the ISS space station in space, and yes, there are also plans to send people to the moon again. With new technologies and changing economic realities, the USA and other nations want to slowly colonize space. Although the focus here is on Mars, the moon is also coming back into focus. The ambitions of Elon Musk and SpaceX, in particular, have also brought NASA back to the moon, and SpaceX has completely turned space travel upside down in economic terms. The private space company is leading the way. Low-cost components, reusable rocket stages, and new fuels are intended to drive forward the exploration and colonization of the universe. Compared to the 1960s and 70s, when the Apollo mission swallowed up billions of dollars, the cost dynamics of space travel have changed significantly. Today, NASA's budget is still substantial. It was around $22.6 billion in 2021, but spending is being used more efficiently. Inflation and technological advances have completely changed cost structures. While some aspects, such as advanced computer-based technologies and specialized materials have become more expensive, innovations in other areas have led to cost reductions. Examples include new fuels and launch vehicles that operate much more efficiently. NASA has already saved billions through partnerships with SpaceX. When the end of NASA's space shuttle program was certain, SpaceX had already launched the Dragon Space Shuttles and NASA saved the development costs for its own new shuttle program. If NASA astronauts have to go to the ISS, they fly with SpaceX, and SpaceX is also responsible for all supply flights to the ISS. These developments have certainly also contributed to NASA resuming its plans for a return to the moon. Together, the project is easily manageable, and interest in lunar exploration has grown again not least because of the potential for scientific discovery 
and the possibility of using the Moon as a springboard for future missions to Mars. The first Orion lunar module was launched in 2022 as part of the Artemis program, and the first humans are expected to fly back to the Moon as early as 2024. The first Moon landings and explorations will be a joint project between NASA and SpaceX, which is already being eagerly awaited. A disaster for our climate? As you can probably already imagine, rockets and space travel do not necessarily have a positive impact on our ecological fingerprint. Environmental impact and sustainability have also arrived in space travel, and they have to. Our planet's climate is changing dramatically, and we can't keep launching rockets into space without being aware of the benefit-damage balance. Although climate change and environmental protection have also led to a more critical view of space travel, protests against current lunar missions such as NASA's Artemis program are not as pronounced as in previous decades. This may also be due to the fact that SpaceX in particular is concerned about these issues. Although the launch of a conventional rocket releases sufficient amounts of carbon dioxide and water vapor into the atmosphere, which can contribute to global warming, carbon emissions from space travel are relatively low compared to other sources of greenhouse gases. SpaceX alone has managed at least a dozen rocket launches per year over the last decade. Since 2021, the ambitious Starlink program has increased this to more than 30 launches per year. SpaceX certainly recognizes this and is researching the development of more environmentally friendly fuels such as methane or even biofuels for rockets. But back to the moon. Did you know that a mineral was found on the moon that could finally give us Earthlings fusion reactors? For those of you who don't quite remember your physics lessons, here's an explanation of nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is the process in which two light atomic nuclei fuse to form a heavier nucleus. This process releases enormous amounts of energy and is the same process that takes place in the sun and other stars. The mineral in question on the moon is helium-3, a rare isotopic variant of helium, and this isotope has an exceptionally high fusion propensity. On Earth, helium-3 is extremely rare, just as fusion-ready isotopes as a whole are an exception. The nuclear fusions that we can create with other elements have a catch. Fusing the nuclei costs us almost as much energy as it produces, so the benefit is zero. Now, helium-3 apparently occurs on the Moon like the proverbial sand in the sea. Embedded in the upper layers of the Moon's rock, it would even be easy to mine the raw material. At the moment, however, it's not yet certain how cost-effectively we could bring the mineral to Earth. The Artemis mission has certainly been given the necessary fuel after this discovery. Now it's no longer just about proving that humans can survive in space or testing whether we can grow plants on the moon. The scientists of the Artemis settlement could be involved in the extraction of helium-3, and who knows, maybe one day this miracle raw material will save the whole Earth. Is the moon mission just a fake? Have you heard the rumors that the planned moon missions are just a fake and that NASA has no real plans to return to the moon? Such unofficial reports began to circulate when NASA repeatedly postponed the launch of the Orion lunar module. Most recently, there are said to have been problems with the rocket's propulsion system, particularly the Space Launch System, which is considered to be the most powerful rocket design since the Saturn V. These delays have led to speculation, but on closer inspection, there is little truth in them. NASA has just missed out on building new high-performance rockets for years and was faced with quite a challenge with the SLS for the lunar shuttles. In order to send the heavy space capsules into the cosmos and give them enough thrust for the journey to the moon, the rockets have to be much more powerful than the rocket types that simply shoot a satellite or a space telescope like James Webb into orbit. For a project as ambitious and complex as returning humans to the moon, New developments in terms of safety and size were necessary, and those in the know know that these processes take time and can be fraught with failure. Despite the challenges and suspicions, NASA has made up for everything that was necessary, and successful test flights have now shown that the Orion capsule really does exist and that it will soon fly to the moon with humans on board. Overall, the idea that the planned moon missions are fake is therefore more a product of mistrust and misinformation than of real facts. And what about the aliens? There's another interesting fact you may have heard of. 
there are supposedly aliens on the moon. Unofficial NASA sources, whistleblowers, and even Apollo astronauts are said to have confirmed that there are stations of creatures on the far side of the moon that we would call aliens. They allegedly use the far side of the moon, which we can never see from the Earth, to mine and do other things. The suspicions about mining on the moon were long regarded as complete nonsense. But as we have known since the discovery of helium-3 on the moon, the connection may not be so far-fetched. The astronauts on the last Apollo missions, in particular, were allegedly confronted with the presence of extraterrestrials, and it was rumored that Nixon was happy to cancel the moon program and other Apollo missions for this reason. But how does this fit in with the Artemis mission? We don't know. Perhaps NASA has a deal with the aliens, or perhaps we are being led around by the nose and the NASA lunar module landings will never take place. Incidentally, it is also striking in this context that Elon Musk wanted to build the first moon hotels a long time ago, and SpaceX keeps postponing these plans. The exclusive flight around the moon for well-paying moon tourists, planned for 2023, also did not take place because the SpaceX Starship is not yet operational. If you love exciting videos like this, click subscribe now.